Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in Lauderdale by the Sea. I've got the old uh, uh, camera up that I used to put up when I first started these videos. This is the live Lauderdale by the Sea camera. And if you look at this pier and you walk straight this way and you keep going a couple blocks, don't walk that way. You won't get far. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am about two blocks on the right hand side live right now. This is the live cam. A little windy and cloudy out there, and uh, uh, just met a customer that was traveling in from another place, too. I'd like to thank him for coming by. Uh, told me he was on vacation down here, and figured he'd swing by the shop and say hi. Made a nice little deal with some 90% 100-ounce bar. Uh, again, thank you for coming in, sir, and thank you for watching the videos. I appreciate that. Well, let's. it's Friday, man. Let's move into what's going on. Uh, markets were up quite a bit this morning, and you know I, I suspect that it's going to be pinned on... Uh, uh, the bad job data, but you know that's really not it. Uh, before I get into that, you know one of the things that uh, you know a lot of people uh, on uh, 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 all the different channels, including myself, and there's some people that deny that the manipulation even exists. But uh, we all talk about a lot of us talk about manipulation of the gold and silver markets. In fact, uh, there's no doubt that it happens, and I've said many times over and over that you know it, it, manipulation is from the time we're born. It's just a human trait. Uh, but when it, when greed gets involved, it even gets worse. Uh, greed or politics. Uh, so we're in the epic time of uh, uh, the game is rigged for sure. But as uh, my favorite author Robert Heinlein said many times, certainly the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't bet, you can't win. Uh, and if you don't, you know, if you don't bet, you're going to just sit on the sideline and die and go poor. Um, so unfortunately, um, he's right there. Well. Uh, it's unfortunate that the game is rigged, but uh, no less. That's just the way things are out there. And that includes, like I said, gold and silver markets, you name it across the board. There's just so much of it. But I don't want you to get discouraged because part of these videos, these videos are all about showing you how it's rigged. You know, It's kind of like if you think about it, the house has an advantage uh, in Las Vegas. The casino always has an advantage. You could look at markets like that as well. Uh, you know, they have they have a they have a set advantage already right off the bat. Okay, uh, and uh, they also know the numbers, they know the data, they know the likelihood of the odds and all this stuff. So they they have a huge amount of data that they're privy to. Not to mention that uh, you got the card players and the players around you that that are privy to the game. And there's even cheating done in the game, which the casino uh, either. They don't turn a blind eye to it. I don't think casinos do for sure, but uh, our casinos, Wall Street and our, uh, our our silver markets, they seem to turn a blind eye to either that or they're ignorant uh, uh, dealers, uh, ignorant casinos. But uh, no less, uh, you got crooked players around you too, and you can look at the crooked players as the. Uh, uh, the people we consider the big short positions that have been shorting silver for the longest time, the biggest, uh, who's no longer in a short position, known as uh, JP. You know, uh, and we know that they've manipulated markets because they've been fined for it. They've been caught doing it red-handed and fined. You know, for the years and years, corporate media and the so-called experts in precious metals denied it ever happened. A lot of the so-called experts denied it ever happened, uh, but it is and it does. So. Uh, 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 I don't want you to get discouraged. Again, you're going to make a lot of money in precious metals. Uh, uh, first off, you're, you're going to look at it as wealth preservation. If you look at it entirely as wealth preservation, you will never go wrong. Uh, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, and I'm not telling you to take all your money and stick all your money in gold and silver. I'm not telling you what to do, where to put your money. However, I can tell you uh, that the primary, ask, you know, the primary reason you want to own gold and silver is for wealth preservation. Because when the shit hits the fan, you're going to be happy you owned it. And the shit has been hitting the fan for quite some time. It just the fan hasn't just uh, 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 flew into pieces yet. Uh, we're at that stage when the blades start coming off pretty soon, I think. And uh, let's take a look at markets today. Uh, again, don't don't get discouraged. Uh, take the uh, the time and, and buy these dips, and uh, don't get fixated on the daily price uh, swings. I mean, you'll it, just drive you nuts, especially with silver. Whew. Uh, let me do a quick refresh here and see what we got going on because I didn't refresh this for a little bit. Uh, down a little bit, but look at this range right here. It looks like they knocked it back down. Uh, and again, I don't know what data. I guess we could take a look at chart and see what time the markets were up here this morning. In fact, let me do that right now. Uh, I usually like to have these things set up for you already. Uh, let's type in 24-hour. There's so many guys that offer these. 24-hour gold chart. I've been looking at Kitco's lately because they spend money on charts. And uh, they're free, free to look at for everybody. So let's take a look at the 24-hour spot price on gold. Uh, there you go, right there. Uh, where did this, well, it looks like 
gosh, the overnight markets, either in Hong Kong, I'm not quite sure what market was open. And uh, But look at this. Look at this overnight when we were sleeping, 4 a.m., 8 a.m. Uh, take a look at this. This is actually probably... Ah, oh, that's the opening of New York where it just shot up dramatically in the morning. What it was, 1780 right there is where we're sitting at at the moment. Hey, where are we sitting? Give me one second here. Uh, <laughs> well, that wouldn't be correct, 1758. But look at this range, 1754 to 1781. So something happened this morning, uh, and it looked like the, the real kick-up was in New York this morning. Uh, but it's backed off to where it was yesterday. Uh, silver, the same exact thing. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, silver chart real quick as well. Uh, gold price today. Let me just go back and type in silver price. All right, silver 24-hour silver chart. Let's take a look and say probably exact same time. As I said, uh, silver will always follow gold uh, generally. It may lag behind at some points, but it always follows gold. And live silver chart. Who? Where is? Uh, uh, there's Kitco. Let's give them a little clicky here. And uh, there you go, right there. Looks like gold. The gold chart didn't show the uh, the down the down price right now, so I guess it's not updated this quick. Uh, but let's take a look at when did this same exact time? Look, same exact time as gold. Uh, both metals kind of took off here uh, at the opening of the New York somewhere in the New York market or the London market. I'm going to say likely in the New York market, uh, and uh, we're back kind of down to where we're trading. But you know, it looks like we've got a uh, a uh, higher low than we've had and uh, a higher higher than we had. So that's a good sign, I think, for uh, both gold and silver right now. Uh, so ranges on silver, 2246 to 2320. Uh, that's a nice, geez, that's a 70 cent plus uh, uh, swing there. And real quick, you see how that happened this morning? Uh, as I said, I think they're going to kind of push it off on uh, on the uh, job numbers, uh, so it doesn't make sense. But that was just kind of a real strange blip, wasn't it? You know, a blip this morning so far. So uh, let's see. I don't know what that means. Uh, again, you have to you'd have to really delve into who bought it and and uh, when it was purchased, what sale. You know, a, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, speaking of that. Uh, let's take a look at some articles here. And uh, what I was just talking about a little bit earlier, uh, as far as uh, 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 this right here, certainly the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you if you don't bet you can't win. Uh, really good article here done by American Institute for Economic Research, the good, the wise, and the just. Uh, you know, I like to talk about economics and politics uh, uh, because it ties into precious metals. It really does in, in, in the long run, it does. Uh, and uh, this was kind of interesting. Uh, should we worry about social capital and trust in market settings? I found an interesting example in Cicero's, uh, Cicero, uh, De Officius, I think he pronounced that maybe, uh, Book 3, Chapter 14, 5. And he writes, my colleague and friend, uh, God, I'm not good at these names, Ach Achilles, uh, when he was asked for a definition of criminal fraud, he replied, when one thing is pretended and another is done. Um, I'm not going to read this whole article, but that, that kind of... Uh, uh, is what we've been seeing here in uh, economics and politics for quite some time. Uh, again, the definition of uh, uh, fraud is when one thing is pretended and another thing is done. It doesn't necessarily have to be criminal, but you know this is what we've been seeing, folks, for for most all our lives: fraud, manipulation, and uh, don't get sad about it. Just understand how it works, who the players are, and uh, you'll be fine with it. Um, and uh, he sums it up down here. I don't want to read, I'm not going to read this whole article. It's really, really good, and you can read it for free at AIER, American Institute for, Ec American Institute Economic, for Economic Research, The Good, the Wise, and the Just. Uh, if you want to consider it a homework lesson, it's really well done. Uh, he's primarily talking about home prices and homes and, and real estate and, uh, you know, uh, manipulation in real estate. Uh, uh, you know, amongst sellers and buyers and stuff. But there's a big lesson here for uh, precious metals people as well, and uh, anybody that's dealing in any kind of markets. Um, Adam Smith summed it up, society cannot subsist among those who are at all times ready to hurt and injure one another. The moment that injury begins, the moment that mutual resentment and animosity takes place, all the bands of it are broke asunder. And the different members of which it had consisted, as it were, dissipated and scattered abroad by the violence and opposition of their discordant affections. A little wordy there, but more or less, uh, if there is any society among robbers and murders, they must at least, according to the trite observation, abstain from robbing and murdering one another. Society must subsist not through the most comfortable state without beneficence, 
uh, but the prevalence of injustice may utterly destroy it. Justice is the main pillar that upholds the whole edifice uh, you know, of society. If it is removed, the great, the immense fabric of human society must in a moment crumble into atoms. Uh, and folks, it certainly seems like that right now. Uh, again, you can't stop playing just because the uh, society crumbles around you. Now's the time to play more and play harder, in my opinion. Uh, again, if you know the, who the players are, how they rig the game, you'll do very well. Now, when it comes to precious metals and silver, uh, I've been reading Ted Butler's uh, articles for quite some time. Uh, Ted Butler is kind of uh, I look up to the guy. I mean, he's he's one of the guys that, that uh, he knows how the silver market, I'm, I'm going to talk about primarily about the silver market. He knows how the silver market is rigged and how, how badly, you know, the big four players in the eight. He's a guy that's been talking about it years before anyone else is. Uh, he, he's the king of uh, uh, pointing out the, uh, in my opinion, he's a number one. Um, and I've never subscribed to his uh uh, Butler research here, and I just yesterday I was talking about. It, I said, you know, I'm going to subscribe and talk about it for a while because uh, I've been reading most of his uh, uh, older articles, and I just subscribed yesterday. And my gosh, I've read already a couple articles, newer articles, because I think the ones that he has on his site are like almost a year old. And uh, I'm blown away. I'm blown away by this guy's knowledge. I'm blown away by Ted Butler's ability to point out who the players are, uh, how they cheat the game, uh, what his opinion is. And the man, the, the guy has an educated opinion, so I listen to him. Um, and and I've got to tell you, uh, if you're into silver in, in any significant way, you have quite a bit of silver, um, and you think $30 a month is, is worth spending, uh, he, I think his uh, membership is thirty something dollars per month for his newsletter. It's worth every penny of it. Uh, if you're again, if you're a silver stacker and you've got enough money and you like, you know, you like following it, uh, and and that's the other thing. I would, you know, once you buy silver and gold, there's no rule that says that you have to every day uh, watch my videos or every day. You can get away with. Uh, buying and putting the stuff away and, and, and uh, uh, not looking at it for a while. You don't have to become an expert in gold and silver to make money in this market. Just listen to people that know what they're talking about, like Ted Butler, or, or guys like myself that uh, listen to guys like Ted Butler. <laughs> well, anyways, I was just going to say I, I was blown away by a couple of his articles I've already read. I can't read them to you only because I am certain, and I wouldn't want, you know, it's a paid subscription. I wouldn't want people, uh, uh, they know not to bother me right now. I'm sorry about this. Um, they, uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, uh, read somebody's paid subscription either. That would just be wrong, even if you could do it. Uh, but Ted puts up some really good articles here, and I uh, highly recommend that, uh, 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 again, if you, if you do enough in silver that you subscribe to his stuff. And whenever you get a chance, read whatever articles you can about uh, on Ted Butler and uh, uh, what he talks about on silver. Uh, as I said, you can subscribe right here. Um, I've talked about some articles uh, his, and more or less, again, I'm not going to quote any of his articles verbatim. Uh, I'm going to check and see if I can quote a, uh, uh, you know, a, a little part, like a segment or a paragraph or something occasionally. Uh, but again, uh, right now, until I figure out uh, how I can pass this information along to you, um, <laughs> I'll hold off. Uh, good article also, Seeking Alpha, uh, Gold Prepares for a 20% Rally from the Annual Lows in the Q1 uh, 2022. You can read this article for free. I believe if you type in Seeking Alpha and you go to Gold and Precious Metals News, this pops up. There's no charge for this. I do have a, uh, a subscription to this uh, 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 Seeking Alpha, again, pretty cheap, and I, I find it very useful. They also talk about equities and other things as well. Uh, gold, prepare for a 20% rally from the annual lows into Q1 2022. I'd have to concur with this. I don't know about the 20%, but I, I think we're going to see a rally coming up here real soon. Sentiment is really bad in precious metals, and that's usually a sign that things are going to change quickly. Uh, this morning, the government announced that unemployment claims finally fell after a month, but $4.2 million Americans are still receiving benefits. Um, I don't know. Uh, and that's a, employment claims finally fell after a month, 4.2. Uh, I think I just read that the uh, uh, it was a big miss, but let's take a look at that again in a moment. Uh, the labor market appears to be struggling less than expected. Uh, the gold market is showing a lot of buying action, and that's true. Uh, the market is ready to move up again, but it move, may move down to test the 1765 level again. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> we are probably going to make the annual low over the next few weeks. The idea, um, that I don't know. I don't know. Could we make the annual low over the next couple weeks? Tough to say. I hate short-term predictions. I don't even like doing them. Um, but again, good article that you can read for free. It's in Seeking Alpha. 
Uh, and you're probably wondering, hey, how come Brian doesn't read all these articles to us? Because uh, once I start reading, man, these shows turn into 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour. And uh, quite frankly, you guys can read over them yourselves and skip over a lot of the stuff that uh, doesn't mean a lot to you, uh, rather than having to skip over my videos. <laughs> uh, ZH, what's going on out here? Not an awful lot. Uh, again, what did I see down here? And uh, Morgan Stanley doubles down on doom, calls for a fire and ice correction with stock markets. Uh, you know, it's again, with the stock market and maybe with the entire global uh, greatest bubble of all time is what I, I call it now, G-B-O-A-T. Greatest bubble of all time. When this bubble bursts, man, it's going to be uh, uh, more than fire and ice, that's for sure. Uh, let's look in. So, you know, they're calling all, you know, they're all calling for it, actually. If you look at their reports, they're all, they're, they all keep saying it's going to crash, it's going to crash, but God, it keeps going up. But it's, it's just going to be one of those things where it just catches everybody off guard. I have no doubt about it. That's, you know, that's the way the big whales make it work. Um, who's hiring? Who's firing? BOE, it says asset valuations appear elevated due to search for yields. Um, hmm. Yeah, he's probably right about that, that's for sure. And uh, what else here? Uh, gosh, not too much. A beat or miss buying stocks. Well, hold on, where was it? Payroll's huge miss. Just 194,000 jobs added in September, even as unemployment rate tumbles, uh, wage rises. I have a feeling that this happened, uh, oh, look at that, about 834. Right around New York Open, that payroll miss was, I think that's why we saw the big uh, jump up in precious metals this morning, bulk metals, uh, that when this data came out, the algos or whatever kicked in and uh, uh, something happened there. But uh, uh, I don't know what else to tie it to. A big whale came in, bought a lot of gold, and then all of a sudden sold. I don't know. Um, so anyways, <laughs> let's move along here. Uh, beat or miss, uh, uh, futures drift before tapering. Uh, not too much to talk yet about, and again, precious metals, uh, uh, that doesn't surprise me right there. Gosh darn. Uh, I can't wait till the next couple years are over. Uh, let's move over here to GATA.org. Um, I recommend that you guys, uh, this is like weekend stuff for you. I, I pointed out a couple good articles, a couple good websites. Most of them are all free. A lot of these articles you can look at for free. Uh, so this weekend, uh, if you get a chance Saturday or Sunday, do make sure you look over some of these GATA.org articles. And again, if you haven't, look over the articles here that talk about how manipulation is done. Uh, the government funding challenges ahead. Um, McLeod talks about what the issues are economically for us and how this will probably bode well, not probably, how it is going to bode well for precious metals. Uh, this is a really good article, The Mechanics of the Global Market. You know, and again, I'm not going to read this to you. It's very technical. It takes some time to wrap your head around it, particularly if you're not familiar with this type of stuff. So uh, uh, I'm going to I'm going to recommend you read this. And here, I already clicked on it, so here it is, right here. It's under the Gold Observer. I believe you can read this for free. Just type in the mechanics of the global gold market. I swear, if you read this uh, article, right? I don't swear. <laughs> if you read this article, uh, uh, how? You know the mechanics of the global market, how all these mar London works, and how uh, the Comex works, and and how these uh, uh, arbitrage works. The guy does Jan does an excellent example explaining to uh, you know technical stuff to people that may not be so technical. So definitely put this on your your homework for this week in the mechanics of the globe the global gold market by the Gold Observer. It's done by Jan uh, Newin. Who's, I think, or how's you? Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Don't mean to butcher people's names. Excellent, excellent article. And again, I'm not even going to begin to read this to you. I'm just going to give this to you as homework to do. Um, let's kind of move along from here because this is a long show. I wanted to talk about product availability. Uh, premiums are moving up again, folks. There's a lot of uh, the, the U.S. silver, you know, the U.S. mint basically uh, uh, stopped producing silver eagles this year for three months. That basically just put a real hurting on physical supplies. Uh, I don't know how they ended up doing this. Uh, again, Ted Butler, uh, in, in the recent art, one of the recent articles I, I just read from him, uh, mentioned that it's just a way for the U.S. Mint to manipulate uh, silver prices to some degree uh, because they could have produced probably in the three months uh, 12 million additional ounces of uh, one-ounce silver rounds. Again, that's according to uh, what he had mentioned, but no less. Uh, what are they doing stopping selling? I, I don't know if they had a shortage of silver. What What is the deal with the Mint not selling silver? Um, they're kind of instructed to. They, uh, 
They're not instructed to go in there and, and, and play a market maker with precious metals. Uh, no less, product out there is getting really tight. That probably explains why silver premiums are pretty stupid right now. 90% uh, silver is just absolutely ridiculous uh, as far as prices go. And uh, uh, I'm going to put on JM Bullion here. I was kind of curious to see. JM Bullion is the 600-pound uh, gorilla when it comes to precious metal online sellers and, and in the background as far as physical metals. Um, I believe they're part of AMARC and it's a big corporate conglomeration out there. Uh, one of the interesting things is the shortage of one ounce generics out there and I can explain to you why there is a shortage of generic one ounces out there because one of the largest players in generics uh, producing one ounce generic rounds and stuff is uh, Silvertown. Uh, and as you can see, they have Silvertown Buffaloes, they have them in stock, whereas you'll see a lot of other companies don't have them. Uh, Silvertown 10-ounce bars are in stock. Uh, what else? All the Silvertown products. Take a look at this. All available to JM. Why is that? Because JM owns Silvertown. All right. You know, if, you, if you're JM and you've got competitors like SD Bullion, Atmex Bullion, and others um, at, who don't own their own mints, I don't think they do, and uh, you've got one of the largest private uh, producers of uh, uh, generic silver out there. Are you going to be feeding your competitors uh, your, your output? Hell no. You're going to starve them because JM doesn't have to sell uh, silver products to outside. You know, they don't have to sell to uh, Atmex or, or uh, any other company. They can pick and choose who they want to sell to. And again, J, in my opinion, and again, this is my opinion here. Uh, uh, the fact that JM Bullion owns Silvertown is the reason why you can find tons of Silvertown generic products on here for a reasonable level. I can beat all these prices that JM's got listed up here uh, as far as uh, generic prices. In fact, I can sell these cheaper than what they're selling these for, for the most part, you know, in quantity. So I can sell British Britannias as cheap as they're selling a Silvertown. Why is that? You know, they obviously they're the uh, the uh, 600 pound gorilla. They have lots of money, lots of resources, and again, resources when when you can take the entire production of Silvertown and, and sell it yourself and not give it to other people. <laughs> uh, that's a you know that's a powerful position to be in. Uh, however, I can still beat their prices. You got to remember, uh, JM Bullion uh, compared to your local coin store has a huge overhead that they've got to keep. So they can be competitive. They can throw up some specials once in a while. Um, throw 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 a few bones to the masses. But uh, uh, meanwhile, they will never be able to beat a good local competitive uh, uh, coin store or bullion store. They just won't. And uh, JM is one of the biggest out there. Uh, again, they will have the ability to have buffaloes when no one else in the country does, but they own the production. At that point, you just uh, switch over to some other products that we can buy from each other uh, for less money. Um, and, and let's see what kind of gold products. I'm looking at in-stock silver. Now, we were just looking at silver, in-stock silver on JM. Oh, in-stock gold. We might as well since we're here. Um, God, there's not a price here I can beat on uh, a lot of these products as well, uh, nor should your local coin store have any issue beating the prices on JM Bullion. Why do I use JM? Well, as you know, I also use Atmex SD. I advertise to beat the three biggies out there. There is some smaller guys out there you can buy from, but you know, as far as I know, JM, Atmex, and SD appear to be the, uh, uh, the big players out there that have the fairest prices and the companies that I would be least concerned about with uh, not shipping my metal or going belly up. You know, again, these are big conglomerate corporations. Chances are they're going to, you know, they're not going to, you're not going to send them tens of thousands of dollars and find out the next morning they went bankrupt like Hans Tolving did. Uh, and who was Hans Tolving, by the way? Let me point out Hans Tolving because I don't think a lot of Hans Tolving. Before J JM, Atmex, and SD came along, Hans, po uh, Hans Tolving, and he was a nice guy too. That blows my mind as well, but I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, even nice guys can go belly up, I guess. Uh, coin dealer jailed, but victims of his nearly $18 million, Hans Tolving took down uh, 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 $18 million worth of money. Um, victims jailed, and they'll probably, they did, I don't think they got their money back. Uh, my understanding of what happened to Hans Tolving is that uh, uh, he uh, it got way over his head. <laughs> Markets went up. He wasn't hedging anything. He just ran it real poorly. Now that's a big difference between uh, I think what you'll see with the big corporate entities. You know they're probably hedged very well. You know so uh, uh, there's no issue with that for them. Not as much. Uh, but that's who Hans Tolving is. Hans Tolving was once the largest online seller out there for years and years and years. He did very well. Uh, let's see. 
the Tobin Company. Is that company even still around? Um, I, I can't imagine that's the same company. Hans Tobin, the collapse of Hans Tobin. Ah, here. If you get a chance, read this uh, article here in Coin Talk, the collapse of Hans Tobin. And uh, you know, no, I guess there's not too much on there, but no less. Uh, this is why I like buying local as well, because third-party risk. You know, the last thing you want to do is, you know, you find a guy that beats your local coin dealer. He's cheaper than Atmex, cheaper than SD, cheaper than uh, uh, um, JM Bullion. Um, but the problem is, is he's out and bump up nowhere. And <laughs> excuse the language, but uh, you know, you ship your money out. You have no clue whether this person is a strong entity, a weak entity, uh, what their situation is. Kind of like a Hans Tolman. Are they hit leverage? You know, at least with you when you walk into your local uh, shop, you can head back there the next day and and uh, see if they get the moving trucks up or something. Uh, but again, I always advise to buy local. And uh, um, none of the products here are really that cheap, really, to be honest with you, if you take a look here. Uh, my, my, again, my suggestion, always buy local when you can. Well, I'm going to move into uh, yesterday's video, which really sucked. <laughs> so, I thought the video was sucked, but our editing sucked yesterday. I mean, we, we ended up piecemealing it together. I got interrupted in, in between a video. Uh, we never got it edited. For We put two videos up. Then we combined it into one. It just sucked. I thought the content was good, but it did stink. Uh, I can't even go over the, uh, only because of the way we, we, we put it out there. Good Again, good video yesterday. Uh, problem is we kept putting it up, taking it down, putting it up, taking it down, editing it. Uh, just a screw up on our part. But I'd like to thank everyone that did take the time to uh, watch yesterday's video. And a lot of you commented it too, but unfortunately we took the video back down. The comments were lost. Hey, listen, we're new to this. I'm learning, so uh, forgive me for my uh, uh, screw-ups this week. Well, as I said, and as I continue to say, buy local. Keep it in town, folks. Spend it in town. Uh, don't don't put that money outside your, your area. It's real important. Um, and uh, your local coin store and your local bullion dealer should be able to beat your uh, uh, the big online sellers there uh, that I do trust as far as uh, not going belly up overnight. But, uh, again... Uh, uh, try to keep that. Try to keep that uh, purchasing local when it comes to precious metals. Well, that's really about it. I'm going to start sounding like a broken record if I keep going on, and uh, this video is going to be shorter than most. Uh, again, not a lot going on out there. Just keep stacking silver and gold, folks. And uh, to all the people out there on Wall Street, silver, keep stacking, guys. You're doing a great job. Hey, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Uh, we're here, happy to help you out. And uh, I think that's really about it. I'm going to call it quits right now and uh, talk to you on Monday. Have yourself a great day. Bye now.